Hi guys, this is Jiggy, a portrait and wedding photographer from the Philippines and welcome to the channel. And in this video, I'm going to show you how we created this image. So I have a BTS video, I will be showing this to you guys. I will explain the equipment that I use, the camera, the entire process of how we shot it. Basically, a lot of tips and tricks will be in this video, okay? So let's do this. Before we continue, I want to give a shout out to Halili Cruz School of Dance because this is where we shot this particular video. So let's start. <laughs> that's, that's actually so funny. The reason why I was asking them to do the count was because I literally have no um, rhythm or beat in my body that I tried doing it first. I was doing one, two, three, but I was just throwing all the dancers off because my count wasn't to beat, so I asked them to just do the count and I will be the one to adjust to them. So I have my camera tethered to my laptop which is tethered to the TV. I think we'll get a clear view. Okay. Alright, so so this is baking soda. Uh, I had one, two, three, four people throwing it at the same time. And you'll notice through the course of the video that we will actually tweak that. Because if you see it now, there as I was explaining, this is our setup. We're tethered to this laptop, a MacBook Pro, uh, using Capture One. And then this is a tether tools, the tether tools cable, USB-C to USB-C, the tether table, and then it's connected via HDMI to a 40-inch LCD TV. Now, this is what I was saying. We had one, two, three, four people throwing the baking powder simultaneously and on count. The problem was, the moment we throw it, it just becomes streaks of powder it doesn't give us the smoke effect or the cloud effect that we are going for. So we adjusted that afterwards. But here, they're actually very happy already with the images uh, because they, they finally saw it on TV. So this is the light setup here. I had one, two, three, and four lights. There, see? Again, I was telling them, I was wondering who was throwing here and there because we were trying to control the direction of the baking powder just to give a more even spread. Yeah. Okay. Happy. Now. Okay, so here. We are also putting powder on our hair. Okay, there. We were putting baking powder on her hair and he, if you saw her, she was putting stuff, which is getting the baking powder from the trampoline and putting it on her body. Just so that when she does that movement, it just explodes from her body. Which turned out pretty cool. Bad for that subject though. Gotta give it to, this is teacher Leah of Halili Cruz. I'm oh, sorry, teacher Gabby of Halili Cruz. Beautiful. Do you see that form? So, there. So, this is the equipment that we have lighting it. This is the Photix Indra 500 with a 185cm reflective umbrella with a diffuser in front. And we have here in the back a Photix Metros bear bulb. Um, okay, so this, this, this light is my main light from each side. Whatever you see here on the left side is the, is the mirror image of the one on the right. The rear lights are the ones giving the, those nice rim lights here to separate the subject from the black background and also illuminating the powder, the baking powder that's being thrown here. And these two are serving as two main lights in front just to be able to give more definition to the shape. Okay. Yeah, it was a nice jump, but notice how I was offbeat, meaning I wasn't clicking at her peak. Her leg should have been up here and her hand should have been there. So, And if you saw the video, she did a perfect jump, but I was just off by a second. And I realized afterwards was that I was using a TTL trigger, the Photix OD2, which I'll show you now. There. So, okay, 
So this was the equipment I was using, the Sony A7R II with a 42 megapixel sensor, which should really come into play later when I, when I process the image, I'll tell you guys why. Um, then a 70-200 f4, the RRS ball head, very stable ball head, and the Photix Odin 2. Now here's the thing that you have to understand with the Photix Odin 2. The Photix Odin 2 is a TTL trigger. So even right, right now, I'm shooting on manual mode. I think this was manual mode 1 over 250, f5.6, ISO 200. So that was it. That was my settings for the camera the entire time. Um, both flash units, the Photix Mitros in the back were at full power. Then I just dialed down the Photix and I don't know exactly what the power was then, uh, to, just to match the, the Photix and the. Now, even if I was shooting on manual mode on my flash, the TTL trigger still gives a pre-flash. So by giving that pre-flash, even if I was in sync when I was shooting, it was still about a second delayed. So I had to learn how to use it with this type of flash. The other solution was just to put in a man, um, another flash, which was a Photix Odin light, which I only realized after um, that it would have been easier for me. So I had to retime myself in order for me to be able to compensate for the delay of the trigger. So let's continue. 7200 F4. 7200 okay. F4. There we go. And then here, I, you get a better look of the Photix Indra 500 with a standard uh, reflective umbrella 185. And then this is the power pack. That is the power pack of the Photix Indra that we had to cover to protect the circuitry from the baking powder. And yes, this is how much baking powder we had. Again, putting it in the hair, doing one more shot. Okay, so five, six, seven, eight, and they were still throwing at eight. We are trying to get our timing right, and you'll see the output. Let's see. There, so you, look, you still see the streaks of powder here, which I'm trying to avoid, that's why Eventually, we fix our timing, but I'm getting the hang of, of, the, of the trigger here. Uh, so I was in sync with everyone already. And they think they like that image. Yeah. Though, again, the legs weren't seen. So we needed to take one more shot. Okay, so I was telling, I was telling uh, teacher Gabby, I just need one, one last image, one final to give it her all. But in my head, I knew that we were going to be taking like two or three more shots. But I keep, just keep on telling her, no, it's a final shot, it's a final shot. So that should give it her all every time. Yeah, so that's me comforting her, telling her that we already have an image that we like but we're still trying to get something even better because, okay, a little bit of segue here. I hate it when people tell me that, okay, that's good enough. Okay, that's good enough. When we can actually still do better. We want to stop when we think that we have the image that we really like, not just an image that's good enough. Okay, so let's continue. There, see? Five, six, seven, then they threw it, then she jumped at eight. See, there. Okay, so now, it's me telling the dancers that even if I get it at perfect, meaning that's the peak of her jump, problem is her hair is covering the foot. So it doesn't show the form, it doesn't show the point. So we had to do something about that. Here, you could already see some people saying, pwede na yan, pwede na yan, meaning it's, it's good enough, it's good enough, and I just couldn't accept that. There, so I'm asking, how about the hair? What are we going to do about the hair? Then, yes, I'm saying that that's the right peak of her jump, so I, that means by doing that, I already got my timing right. The five, six, seven, eight, we got everything in sync already. And then we came up with a decision. It's a good thing that these people that we are shooting are professional dancers. 
that she just needed to delay the flip of her hair. So she could reach the, the peak of her jump and then flip her hair so that it doesn't cover her, her foot. So there we go. So a little bit more powder on her on her hair. Okay, so before that, I just want to say that this background uh, is provided off provided by the school. They had it for one of their I don't know why they have a backdrop this big. It's just one big black cloth. That it was perfect for this scene. It's about ten feet away from the from the trampoline, just so that we don't get any light spill here and we can keep this as pure black. All right, let's do this. Let's see. All right, so so uh, you hear me say, okay, I have my focus locked, meaning during this time in my camera, I turned off my focusing and my shutter button. I focused on the uh, using the AF on AF uh, back button. So the moment I lock my focus, no matter what I do with my shutter, it's not going to refocus, which is going to be very essential when you're shooting um, action shots like this. Anyway, she's moving at the plane up and down, not forward and backward. So by moving up and down, she'll always be in focus. All right. There we go. I think you got it with a shot. So let's see. There. <laughs> Sorry. There was really a software delay for some reason. It took like a few seconds before it was shown on TV. Or maybe because it was a, it's a 42 megapixel file, so it takes a while for it to transfer. So the moment they saw it in there, see, they were very happy with this. We got the hair correct, the extension correct, the point correct, the form correct. And this was one of my concerns to begin with. I go, can we not show her face? I said, I don't like it because her face is not shown. They go, don't worry about it because when it comes to dance photos, the face is insignificant. It's all about the form and the extension. I was like, all right. So, so they were very, very happy with this image. And we stopped from there. All right, and they were already deciding that this might actually be the cover for the calendar that they were doing. Okay, so just to recap, I had four lights. Two Photix Mitros were in the back connected to a Cerberus. They were in full power and wide open, meaning 20 millimeter. I had two Photix Indras on left and right of the, of the dancer with a 185 reflective umbrella, also from Photix, and a, and a diffuser in front. So all those, whatever was the setup on the left side was the exact mirror on the right. The power settings of both were exactly the same and they were equidistant to center. And then I shot this with an A7R Mark II. I shot it horizontal. You might be wondering why I didn't shoot it vertical. It was because I wanted to get more of the powder and I knew that I was shooting with a 42 megapixel sensor and I could just easily crop. So I shot it with an A7R Mark II, a 70 to 200 F4 and uh, the so uh, Photix Odin II trigger. And then what else? Um, basically, that's it. Uh, it was just all about working with the team. So to end this portion of this video, one thing that I would want to say is that these types of images is not mine. They're not mine. I can't say that this is my image because the concept was a collaboration of both the school and myself. Plus, and if you notice, the entire time we were shooting, I was getting insights from everyone. Like we were trying to work out the timing. We were trying to work out how much powder we would be putting or should we put powder? What types of poses that they should be doing? I had people saying, it's a good pose, it's a bad pose, it's all right. It's, you know, all these people, all these creative people help create this image. So again, um, I'd like to give a shout out to Halili Crew School of Ballet for this fantastic, fantastic experience. And now we go to processing this image. All right, so let's get down to post-processing. This is a favorite image of everyone. So this is the one that we will be processing. The reason why I have another one here is because I find this area to be a bit empty. So we're going to be using this image to fill up that part. That's one of the beautiful things about shooting with a tripod is that it's very easy to just interchange all these pictures. All right, so I start off with Adobe Bridge. This is where we call most of the images. And I would open it up in Adobe Camera Raw. From here is where I would do my general adjustments. Very, very important for me. Everything is normally done in RAW. 
in Adobe Camera Raw. Photoshop is just for cleaning, but most of my global adjustments is done here. First thing I touch obviously is the exposure, but I think this is properly exposed already, but maybe I would bring it down just a tad. My contrast, I usually add my contrast towards the end, so I remove contrast here in RAW, just to take away most of the shadows. Then maybe my highlights, because of this part here, this area here, uh, we blew out some of the highlights from the back, so I'm gonna try to bring it back. Beauty of shooting in RAW, beauty of the Sony A7R Mark II. The sensor is fantastic. There's so many details that are there. Look at that. Look at how we were able to bring out the details here. And then now, since I brought down the contrast too, but I'm going to increase the shadow just to take away the blacks. Because I'm going to add them again later. So I want a blank canvas whenever I'm doing my global adjustments, especially in RAW. And then my white, maybe I'll make it a bit brighter. That should be good. Now my blacks, since I took out the shadows already, I took out the contrast, I can now increase some of my blacks, especially for the background. There, that should look good. I, I'm not really looking at this part here anymore. I'll show you guys in a minute why I'm not looking at that. Okay, so now uh, I'll probably increase the vibrance a bit. That should be good and maybe the saturation just a bit. All right, perfect. Okay, so the reason why I shot this horizontal was to make sure that I got all these things, all these elements in. Knowing that I have a 42 megapixel sensor, I can easily do this. I can just crop it and make it a vertical photo. Oh, wait, I'll crop it into its original form, which is two by three there. we go I think this should be oh I like this one yeah I could do it somewhere here like that okay so that's done now all my adjustments here I will copy to this one just so that when I do my my comp uh, well when I get this part here it's gonna be that's gonna look exactly the same so I'm gonna sync all the settings um, maybe I'll just sync all there we go. Okay, then I'll open both images in Photoshop now. Okay, so you saw how I usually, I, I do all my global adjustments in Adobe Camera Raw. And this is the final edited image. Now, I don't have time because I want to keep this video relatively short. So I'll just go through the every step that we did, but I won't be doing it anymore. This is the final output. This is how it looked like from Adobe Camera Raw. As I said earlier, we're gonna add some, some uh, elements here to fill up this blank space, which is what we did there. And at the same time, in this layer, I also did a bit of liquify. I just pushed this area here and push this one and push this one there. I also removed this ble blemish here, which is basically just some, some baking powder here, baking soda. But it looks like a, it looked like a big mold, so I just removed that. The next one is for this one. We took that one out, All right? Then a bit of dodge and burn for this area here and this area here, and just general darkening of the outer edges. I did it twice, just to focus everything on the image. And basically that's it. So my final stage from that is to save it. And after I've saved it, I do, I run my action for web upload. So there you go. So now it has my signature and my website there. All right, so I hope you guys found that useful or insightful or it gave you a bit of inspiration to start shooting dance or to start playing around going outside your comfort zone because I said, I am a portrait and wedding photographer and yet I shot dance and to think I don't know how to dance. But again, that was one of my frustrations. That's why if I can't dance, I might as well just shoot dance. So if you like this video, please feel free to leave a comment below and maybe you could request some videos in the future that something that you might want me to discuss. 
And at the same time, if you can follow me on Instagram, it's at Jiggy Alejandrino. And also, and, and the most important, please don't forget to subscribe to this channel, like this video, and while you subscribe, please click that notification bell so that every time I upload a new video, you will be notified. All right? Till the next video.